for the third <laughs> My name is Tim Ridington and I live at 21 Susquehanna Avenue and um, I, I have to tell a little story before I get into why I'm up here right now. In 2001, uh, through my uh, political activity, uh, a mayor felt threatened. I'm not saying John Picard feels threatened right now. I'm, I'm dealing with something that took place last week here. So he felt threatened politically, so he used the police department to try and harass me. Um, he claimed that I was stalking him, which was untrue. Even the cops that interviewed me uh, knew it was untrue, that they were just playing a political game. Um, they tried to say I stole a credit card from the city, which was found to be completely untrue. Um, and this was just an effort to try and quiet me down because um, we were doing a lot of collateral damage to an administration that was corrupt. Um, every week I would come to city council meeting. A lot of times Steve DiCrescenzo would come to the city council meeting. Even Mr. Conlon used to come to the city council meetings with his wife. Mr. Hickey used to come to the city council meetings. Mr. Hickey, as a resident, Mike Hickey, uh, got up here and spoke many, many times. Um, I, I like to uh, use the analogy, he's like an old preacher. He's uh, got the fire and brimstone going on. But never threatening. And um, I just think it was ridiculous that the police were sent to wherever, his house or uh, after him, because somebody felt threatened. That somebody was Tom McCarthy, Councilman McCarthy. Now, Councilman McCarthy has a lot of nerve to feel threatened because I know Councilman McCarthy threatened Councilman Lewis. I know Councilman McCarthy threatened former chairman of the uh, Planning and Zoning, uh, John Panza. In fact, he was upset that John Panza wouldn't go outside and, outside and fight with him. And he, he challenged John Panza to a fight because John Panza called him a puppet. Now, our reporter from the register right here interviewed him and he said, they could say whatever they want. It doesn't bother me at all. But I felt threatened. Well, John Panza called him a puppet. Was he threatened that night? And Tom told me flat out, the guy wasn't a man. That's why he wouldn't come outside with me. You know what? The guy was a smart man not to go outside. Smart man. Okay? Now, along with that fun, this guy throws himself around all over town. Natalie DeRosa, who's been on the Savin Rock Committee for years and years and years, was told by Tom McCarthy that she was supporting the wrong mayoral candidate this year. That's why she wasn't contacted to be on the committee. Okay? There, he has had his weight thrown all over people, all over the place. Um, he doesn't even have the respect that Harold Allen had, and yet he's more of a bully than Harold Allen ever was. And so, with that said, I would like to ask that he either be censored or a note be put uh, of uh, some kind of uh, reprimand to Tom McCarthy. Um, I don't even know half the time that this goes on, but I gotta tell you something. He politicized something as small as a tree light and politici politicized Santa Claus. Now I've got, there's a room full of kids here, so I'm not gonna tell you how he politicized Santa, Santa Claus, but this guy has got a problem, a big problem. And if the guy was on the other team, you guys would be outraged over it. If this was 2001 all over again, and this was a rich bore or a city councilman, you'd be all upset over it. You, th this would be all over the place. The funny thing is, the New Haven Register's known about the threats. They knew right after their story came out of other threats, and they did nothing. Because here's Tom taking nice pictures all over the place. He's the anointed one. When the mayor's out of town, he, he has to stick his butt in the chair and park in the mayor's parking space because 
Unlike you, Steve, the guy has got a massive ego and it has to be massaged. And so he either needs to be reprimanded or censored. And I have to tell you, not since Borer has been in office have I had the feeling that I needed to work to make sure somebody was not elected. Not since Rich Borer in 2005. And I'm going to work damn hard, whoever the candidate is, for that seat to make sure he doesn't win. Because that's, that's nonsense. I don't know how many other arms he's twisted. I don't know if we've gotten votes on the uh, Building Oversight Committee because he felt like he should twist people's arms. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you listen because I know you don't go for that. Steve, I know you don't go for that. So you've got to do something about that. The next thing I like to talk about is the, the Front Avenue Asphalt Plant uh, project. I, um, I walked that property when I was a teenager. I walked that property when I was a kid. I walked that property in my 20s. I just walked that property with Nick Pascal a month ago. And you know what? I've seen dirtier properties. I've seen, I've seen properties with much less potential for, for development. And that property could be much more than an asphalt plant. Now, try to put an asphalt plant on Trumbull Street or in my neighborhood on Susquehanna Avenue and see what happens over there. First of all, on paper, that's nine acres of land. Uh, I believe almost two is, is wetlands. The rest of it is buildable property. Now, we're being told that, oh, it's contaminated, it's this, it's that. On the other side of the wetland is where the... Uh, the um, landfill site is. But towards Front Avenue is a clean site. It's, it's actually an old trucking terminal and uh, an old soda factory that was uh, over on Front Avenue. It abuts the uh, Helm Street property where the incinerator used to be. So I believe there's six acres over there. So if you combine seven buildable acres and six, eight, six acres that the city of West Haven has, that's about 13 and a half acres for a beautiful industrial park. Absolutely gorgeous industrial park. On the other side of the street, uh, behind two old trucking terminals, is, is another plot of land that runs from where Kelly Construction is all the way almost to the back of, uh, of uh, what do you call it? Um, the stadium over there, Quigley Stadium. Okay? You have the potential to have a beautiful, beautiful industrial park. This is something we don't have in West Haven. Shelton has them all over the place. This is the tax base for, for the town of Shelton. Okay, all over the state. And, and you know what, Whoever, if anybody reads what I write, I'm in them all the time. I fix forklifts. I'm in factories and warehouses all the time. We don't have anything like it other than 12 Oaks, which is on the corner of uh, Front Avenue and, uh, or Frontage Road and uh, Morgan Lane. That's a nice, clean industrial park over there. UPS runs in and out of there. You don't have chemicals running out of there, you don't have hazardous waste. I brought Nick where my shop is in Milford, off of Woodmont Road, on, uh, what do you call it, uh, Eastern Steel Road. The whole area down there, absolutely gorgeous. There's 11 acres over there, um, and my, my landlord for that area in 11 acres pays the town of uh, Milford about $150,000 a year for that, for those, uh, for a clean industrial park. Now, whether they tell you that this is a nice, clean asphalt plant and nothing's going to happen, it's portable, blah, 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 you've still got trucks that are being filled, you've still got trucks that are being emptied, and they're still running through there, okay? And if you'd like to go to a few asphalt plants and take a look at a few and see how filthy they really are and what they smell like, I'll take you to show you a couple because they're not a thing that you want in your neighborhood, absolutely not. I'm being told, and this is being told to me by city workers, on the other side of uh, Helm Street in New Haven, over near Longini Sausage, that they actually process asphalt over there. In the summertime, you can't stand on uh, Helm Street because the smell comes wafting over from the boulevard in New Haven, and it's so bad that the city guys can't stand over there. It's extremely bad. And so I don't, I don't know what, what the rush was, what the deal was here for this, but there's a lot more potential to that than, than meets the eye. Um, as far as uh, dirty sites, even if there is, 
I can tell you, I showed Nick. I pointed in the back. I didn't even have to see it. There's a gas tank, a gas uh, station. There was a filling station for the trucks in the back, and there's a tank in the ground. That's there. Okay? Those don't cost that much to clean up anymore. It's not like it used to cost a million dollars to clean up a gas station. And uh, this is diesel. They take the fuel. They take the dirt. They actually burn the dirt now to get the fuel out of it. There's tires on the thing. Oh, here's the big, big hot cell. I took Nikki. In, I went with Nikki inside the building. Oh, the building's full of tires. You know what? There's about two dumpsters full of tires. You know what they do with tires now? They grind them up. They put them in the asphalt and they use them for roofing material. So there, this is a big con job. If you ever saw the music man, Professor Harold Hill, oh, we got trouble, big, big trouble. Oh, with a capital T that rhymes with B and stands for pool. That's what you guys were sold, a bill of goods. Okay? Because it's not dirty over there. Uh, Lindbrook Soda was the name of the place that was in that building, okay, the other building. There was much, much more potential. Now, I don't know if the story was written wrong, or what? But now the story is, originally it was that Layden was going to wait and see if they could get permits to put the, the asphalt plant in there. Now, Layden doesn't care. They're waiting to do a closing before the end of the month. Well, wait a minute. If they're turned down, what's going on that property? And were you, as city council people, sold a bill of goods? Because my understanding was, and I was here the night you voted, was there wasn't anything going there unless they got the permits to put that in. And now all of a sudden we're rushing for a closing even if it's not in planning and zoning. And it isn't even on the agenda for planning and zoning. It's nowhere near it. It, it actually has to go through inland wetlands first because there's water next door to it. And, and so what was the big rush here? What, what, why are we in a big hurry? You could have had the potential for other things. It was never showcased to anybody else. You could have done something else with that property. So. You know, just like the Brophy and Herns of 1985 and all the other promises of, of the world, of West Haven, I'm wondering what, what the big rush was here. Who, who was behind rushing to get $475,000 for something that we had the potential to do something great with? And now you're going to put neighbors in, in danger because you've got a stink that's going to go over to, to First Avenue. You've got a stink that's going to go over to... Uh, uh, all the little side streets, Clifton Street and Phil Street, and all those streets. There's homeowners. These are people that vote. And so you need to rethink this or stop this if you can. Okay? That's a doormat. Okay? That's what that is. Now here's what you do with doormats. You walk on them. Okay? Now, I worked with most of you in elections. I work most of, with most of you for responsible finance in this city. No more hocus pocus, no more nonsense. And you know what? As a taxpayer, I've been walked on just like that doormat. And it's wrong. It's very, very wrong. Your allegiance is to the people of West Haven, not to John Picard, not to Tom McCarthy, not to Ed Marcus, and not to UNH. It's to the people of West Haven. And you know, people are going to know where your allegiance was, and who your allegiance was to. And, and, I, and I'm just really, really disappointed. That's why I've become the doormat, along with a lot of other people that are doormats. So please, think about the people of West Haven, not what you're being fed. Go do your homework. One other thing. I uncovered about $8,000 worth of bills that weren't paid to Fair Auto Supply in West Haven. Because I knew we had bills out there, bills that people weren't getting, weren't getting paid for. I've heard from librarians that told me that uh, book vendors were calling them. I've heard from PTA people that said that they couldn't get ink because they hadn't paid the bill for the ink. I'm hearing that Marcus uh, Derry was getting ready to sue West Haven because we hadn't paid for the milk. So, but let me tell you something. $8,000 going back to 2010 to an auto parts store in town. Now, if I owed $8,000 in taxes, how much, Mike Kiki, how much do you owe in taxes? Nothing now. <laughs> if you owed $8,000 in taxes, what would happen, Steve? They'd come down with a hammer on you. You know what's happening right now with those people? Here's what happened. Last year they asked for payment on the past due invoices. They were said, oh, um, 
who signed for those? Well, here's who signed. We have the invoices. This is with Board of Education. Everything's commingled and mixed up, okay? Oh, all right, we'll get back to you. No one got back to them. No one. So then I make an issue out of it about a month ago, okay? All, and, and the young lady from New Haven Register still hasn't done the story. I gave them to her in April. She's done nothing. I think she was waiting for the finance director to pay the bills to do the story because she did zero, nothing. Okay, so now what's happening? These people are getting dragged out over at Fair Auto Supply. They're finally getting some checks. But what's happening is, well, send us the purchase order that was with the ticket, with the ba ba the ba ba This was all done for the past two years, but it's all being dragged out. Dragged out so the city can use them as an excuse for why they weren't getting paid. There's $490 of tire chains from December of 2010. $490. They just got paid the other day. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And we're the fiscally responsible. I feel like an idiot. An idiot. I got a guy over there in the back that I fought with while Bohr, we were going after Bohr and John Picard was coming in. Right there, fought with him. Oh, no, 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 you're wrong. We're going to be better. Things are going to be great. Things are horrible. The place is a disgusting mess. No one listens. Tinker listens. You call Tinker and you can get something done. I'd run Tinker for mayor right now. But the place is filthy. I called the mayor four times. I've been here. I said it before. Please take a ride with me. I want to show you things. Four different years in a row. He wouldn't take a ride with me. Last year was the last year, right after Labor Day, I asked, please take a ride with me and look at things, what are, what's going on here. He wouldn't take a ride. Tinker finally went for a ride. Tinker went and looked at it. He said, Tim, I know what you're talking about. I filed a, a code enforcement complaint against the city of West Haven because two feet of grass in areas where there shouldn't be two feet of grass, there shouldn't be any grass. If I had two feet of grass on my lawn and in my yard, They'd be at my house in two minutes. But the mayor doesn't have time to take a ride to look at it. Please, give me a break. So, anyway, thank you. And I'd like to say hello to Stanley 109. Uh, he's doing a great job in New Haven Register. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on your city council? Your mat. Yeah. My, oh, thank you. Anybody yes. wants to borrow my mat? <laughs> or if you have your own, we're going to... For the second time, anyone would like to address City Council? Mr. Hickey. Go ahead, Mr. Hickey. I'll be here all night.